I am pleased to announce our next speaker, Dr. Jennifer Ogier. Dr. Ogier is the Vice President of Medical Science and Innovation at Antec Diagnostics. She is passionate about supporting the human-animal bond and is dedicated to building community that goes beyond color, gender, race, and economic barriers. She earned her DVM from the Ontario Veterinary College, University of Guelph in Canada. She spent several years in academic teaching, research, clinical practice, and administration as an associate professor at Tech Texas A&M University and the Western College of Veterinary Medicine in Canada. She has a strong interest in business management and completed an executive MBA and Master of Arts in Organizational Behavior and Leadership. Dr. Ogier is committed to promoting diversity, equity and inclusion, and belonging in veterinary medicine and is currently the Vice Chair of the Diversity Veterinary Medicine Coalition, a member of the Mentorship Committee of the Multicultural VMA and an executive member of the Black Veterinary Professionals Association of Canada. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Jennifer Ogier. Greetings and welcome everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you may be viewing from today. When I was approached to speak at the Centers for the Human Animal Bond Conference, I was thrilled at the opportunity to share my story and discuss with all of you how promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in veterinary medicine can help ensure everyone has the opportunity to experience the incredible benefits of our unique and powerful relationship with pets. I am Dr. Jennifer Ogier, the Vice President of Medical Science and Innovation at Antec Diagnostics, part of Mars Veterinary Health. I'm also currently the Chair of Board of Directors for Veterinary Installed Borders, which is part of VSF International, and also the Vice Chair of the Diversify Veterinary Medicine Coalition. This is a group of animal health organizations, as well as committed individuals who've come together to address issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in veterinary medicine. Decades of research has shown us that the special bond we share with animals is as nuanced as it is rewarding. At a time when the global pandemic continues to keep us physically apart from loved ones, we're committed to better understanding the science behind a human-animal bond and how it can help address societal challenges such as social isolation and loneliness. Conversation is such an important piece of the puzzle to advance inclusion and better understand other diverse backgrounds and experiences. Leaders who lend their voices to champion diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging play a significant role in ensuring everyone has access to the proven benefits of human-animal interaction. Today's presentation will celebrate those who are promoting equity and fostering a culture of belonging in the intersection of human-animal interaction as well as with veterinary medicine. And we work together to build a better world for pets and people alike. But before I get into that, I'd like to take a little time to look at the bigger picture. It is evident now more than ever that the world as we once knew it is changing. The US population is rapidly transforming and diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging have taken center stage. These 2014 statistics that you see on the left-hand side of the screen give us a snapshot of diversity in the United States a few years ago. The future generations showcase how the U.S. population will continue to evolve and become more diverse in the future. Given this major shift, our view and understanding of work culture must also adapt. Workforce experts indicate that cultural competence is one of the top five skills that all employees will need in the future. Multiracial and multi-ethnic populations are the fastest growing in the world. Women have surpassed men in education and one billion will enter the workforce over the next two decades. There are nearly five generations in the workforce. 
and technology is dramatically increasing our ability to work virtually across cultures, as well as geographies, 24 hours a day, and sometimes even seven days a week. As the saying goes, change is good. Everyone, employers and employees alike, have a stake in cultivating more diverse, inclusive workplaces. When people are appreciated for their differences and similarities and provided a supportive and safe place to grow, they are empowered to do their best work. A 2018 Ernest & Young report found employees are 3.5 times more likely to live up to their full potential when they feel like they belong at work. Data from McKinsey and & Company and Deloitte found that diverse and inclusive teams yield a 66% higher return on investment than less diverse teams. And other McKinsey and & Company and Deloitte data found that companies with an inclusive culture are eight times more likely to achieve better business outcomes. Our practices and organizations will be more successful when we reflect the diversity of those we serve, owners of pets and other companion animals from various multicultural backgrounds, experiences and needs. They originate from many different areas. Diversifying the veterinary healthcare team at every level allows us to better understand and communicate effectively for higher quality animal care. So where do we start? As one of the least diverse professions in the United States, 90% of veterinarians identify as white. The road to building greater diversity starts with individual levels of awareness. So what do we mean when we discuss diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging? Diversity refers to the respect and appreciation of the physical, cultural, and psychological differences and similarities that make each person unique. When put into the context around veterinary medicine, diversity is recruitment reliant, it's quota driven, it's disregarding differences, it's increasing representation, it's compliance focused, and valuing diversity in a veterinary environment means embracing and celebrating fellow veterinary professionals that look, talk, or think differently, and recognizing and embracing those attributes only strengthens a group or an organization. Equity involves removing barriers, presenting attainable op opportunities for all and treating everyone fairly. But treating everyone fairly in an environment doesn't mean treating everyone the same. Rather, it encourages leaders to recognize differing backgrounds and perspectives and meeting individuals where they are for their optimal success to be attained. Inclusion entails fostering an open environment where everyone is invited, feels valued, and can contribute freely. Inclusion in our area of veterinary medicine and practice is culturally transformative. It's action-oriented. It's embracing employees' full authentic selves, experiences, and backgrounds. It's creating advancement opportunities, and it is a business imperative. When people feel included, they also feel inspired to engage further with the veterinary profession, which creates a more positive, satisfying, and sustainable environment. Belonging means creating a place where individuals feel safe, accepted, and empowered to express their opinions and be heard without fear of judgment, backlash, or even consequence. A sense of belonging means all people can be their authentic selves and thrive. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging are essential in cultivating and maintaining a culture that fosters both individual as well as organizational success. And by giving people a place to flourish, we create opportunities for them to thrive in the veterinary community. I'm really excited to be here today because I get to share my story with you. 
As a young girl growing up in the Caribbean, I had always dreamt of becoming a veterinarian. And for as early as I can remember, I would try to save every sick or injured stray dog or cat that I found living on the streets of Trinidad where I grew up. And this was much to the dismay of my parents. My mother and my elder sister are both lifelong caregivers and nurturers. They have each spent 30 years or more themselves in a medical profession as registered nurses and doubly trained also as midwives. My own dedication, hard work and determination were recognized when I fortunately received a scholarship more than 25 years ago to study veterinary medicine. I was privileged and I attended the Ontario Veterinary College in Canada. I was extremely happy. In fact, I was ecstatic that I could pursue my passion to help animals and serve the communities I lived in. There were very few BIPOC veterinary students in the program then. There were few students that were Black, Indigenous, and even people of color. But there were even less when I did my internship in small animal medicine and surgery, even less during my residency in emergency medicine and critical care, and my graduate degree in critical care. I was blessed. I've been blessed to have wonderful, open-minded friends and influential mentors who always encouraged me to express my individuality and be proud of myself, be proud of the contribution I was making to this noble profession. And so for over a decade in academia, as a professor in emergency medicine and critical care, and now in my current role as the Vice President of Medical Science and Innovation at Antec, I have aimed and strived to be a pillar of strength and support to other BIPOC pre-veterinary and veterinary students. This has been both personally and professionally rewarding to me, to be able to represent a positive, resilient role model for students and junior colleagues, and at the same time, help them overcome obstacles that I have faced so they too can follow their dreams and succeed. And so through my own journey in veterinary Edison, I understand, I understand that people long for that culture of safety and belonging, particularly in the BIPOC community. And you must recognize that you're going in with a higher purpose. And that purpose doesn't sway, it shouldn't sway, based on your race, gender, financial status, or ethnic background. My passion for helping animals, my inner strength, and the gracious people along the way have carried me through this journey. I have had many phenomenal mentors, and they didn't see me as a woman with a different complexion. But just like me, they cared about helping pets. They cared about helping the people as well. And that transcends all boundaries. So looking forward, how do we build a community around us that goes beyond color, gender, race, or even economic barriers. That's the goal of the DVMC, a wonderful organization that I'm thrilled to be a part of. The DVMC or the Diversified Veterinary Medicine Coalition is a group of animal health organizations as well as committed individuals coming together to address issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in veterinary medicine. At the DVMC, we aim to increase BIPOC representation in the veterinary profession, which will improve access to quality care for more animals and service to the community. The DVMC was established in 2020 to help meet the needs of members of the BIPOC community and other underrepresented groups who are interested in an education in veterinary medicine. The goal is to bolster them at each step in their educational journey, all the way from youth to adulthood. And to accomplish this, we at the DVMC have developed tools and resources that help promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in veterinary medicine by providing scholarship and mentorship for BIPOC students, for ensuring that veterinary professionals like myself find a culture of belonging and safety in our profession and that we continue to build momentum from a communication standpoint, positioning the industry as a place for all people. 
At the DVMC, we've also embarked on a multi-year partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund in an effort to develop, grow, and support minority students at historically Black colleges and universities so they too can pursue their dream of becoming doctors of veterinary medicine. Students will be awarded a scholarship in the amount of $10,000 during their junior year, as well as in their senior year, totaling $20,000. And then upon successful completion and acceptance into the veterinary program, students will receive an additional $15,000 in scholarship funds each year, totaling $60,000 per student. In addition to financial aid, the DVMC matches veterinary scholarship recipients with a paid internship opportunity at one of our member organizations. Students will complete the internship the summer before their final undergraduate year of education. And then in order to provide personalized direction and guidance, we assign an industry mentor to each student throughout the experience. We know that talk matters. However, when it's followed by meaningful action, it carves a clear path for societal change. It takes a diverse group of individuals and diverse approaches to meet the needs of pets in America. To the extent that we can both appreciate and collaborate with one another, we can do a better job of meeting the needs of pets. Those wise words come from Dr. Michael J. Blackwell, Director of the Program for Pet Health Equity College of Social Work at University of Tennessee, and the next ex equity champion I will celebrate today. Following the footsteps of his father, Dr. Blackwell earned a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from Tuskegee University, and he also earned an MPH, a Master's of Public Health from Loma Linda University. Previously, Dr. Blackwell served as Chief of Staff in the Office of the Surgeon General of the United States. He was Chief Veterinary Officer of the United States Public Health Service, Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Tennessee, as well as Chief Veterinary Officer of the Humane Society of the United States. He achieved the rank of Rear Admiral and Assistant Surgeon General during 23 years on active duty with the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps, and he received honor awards. He twice received the Surgeon General's Exemplary Service Award. Dr. Blackwell, who also serves as Chair for the Access to Veterinary Care Coalition, is on a mission. He is on a mission to improve access to veterinary care, especially for families with limited means. The access movement gained momentum when the Access to Veterinary Care Coalition was founded in 2016. And as AVCC has helped advance and formalize the field of veterinary social work, which focuses on the special healing power of the human-animal bond and the emotional support we all need as veterinary professionals. One of the AVCC's first projects was a study assessing barriers to veterinary care that's encountered by pet owners across the socioeconomic spectrum. This study found that nearly 28% of pet owners had experienced a barrier to veterinary care. And overwhelmingly, this was because of financial reasons. That proportion may well be rising due to economic stress caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. But the study did make five recommendations for stakeholders to consider. It recommended that we improve veterinary care delivery systems to serve all socioeconomic groups, that we provide incremental care to avoid non-treatment, that we improve our ability of valid and reliable information dissemination so we can educate pet owners, and that we develop public policies that improve access to veterinary care as well as pet retention, and that we continue to perform further research in other areas to understand the impact of how pets are obtained. Action is a core principle for Veterinarians Without Borders, an organization I'm privileged to be a part of and to be a, the chair of the current board of directors. Its mission is to advance human health and livelihoods in underserved areas by sustainably improving animal health and husbandry through education, 
veterinary service, enterprise development, as well as enhanced trade. We also serve to enhance public health through building capacity for the prevention, control, or elimination of priority diseases and the improvement of human nutrition. In 2016, Veterinary and Star Borders had a report that documented that over 50 communities of 100 or more families were without access to full-time veterinary care in Northern Canada. Canada's vast and sparsely populated Northern regions are the defining elements of that country. The dogs are not only members of families, but they're integral to the culture as well as being iconic for these regions. But there are unfortunately wide gaps in access to veterinary services in Northern Canadian communities. And that results in animal health as well as welfare concerns, such as the outbreak of canine distemper, rabies and parvovirus infection, as well as human health and safety issues. Veterinary clinics, charity groups and veterinary colleges in Canada are currently conducting temporary veterinary clinics in some of these communities. However, many of these communities have never had access to these temporary veterinary clinics, and they have requested the resources necessary to offer basic animal health care locally, as well as getting assistance in providing programs to address One Health issues such as rabies transmission. The government funding for veterinary services in these remote communities is very limited, leaving veterinary care to be provided as these short-term veterinary clinics by a variety of non-governmental organizations. The COVID-19 pandemic has further highlighted the importance of a One Health approach to health issues and vulnerabilities in the region. And so in an effort to help expand veterinary services to underserved Northern Canadian, Canadian communities, Veterinarians Without Borders put into action the Northern Animal Health Initiative. This is a strategic partnership with active stakeholders in these remote regions to provide effective and sustainable veterinary services in a variety of contexts. The initiative implements an adaptive, participatory One Health approach that engages both Indigenous as well as non-Indigenous stakeholders to provide access to high quality services that address human health, animal health, and elements of environmental health, such as climate change. Ultimately, Veterinarians Without Borders hopes to take learnings from the Northern Animal Health Initiative to develop guidelines, resource materials and training programs for community animal health and management workers who will provide local capacity to triage and address straightforward health problems, but also be able to access telehealth for more complicated problems. Our long-term vision at Veterinary Institute Borders is to facilitate a comprehensive and coordinated approach to animal health in Canada's north. Organizations like Veterinarians Without Borders, the Access to Veterinary Care Coalition, and the Diversified Veterinary Medicine Coalition are critical in building a community that goes beyond color, gender, race, or even economic barriers to ensure as many people as possible can experience the indescribable joy and the immense power of the human animal bond. But likewise, I recognize the part individuals like myself and Dr. Blackwell and all of you here today must play. We must continue to advance high quality research in the field of human animal interaction that accounts for cultural, social, as well as economic influences, and that is representative of all the communities that we work in, live in, as well as play in. We must all reaffirm our commitment to removing systemic barriers that hinder marginalized and underrepresented communities from accessing the physical, mental, and the emotional benefits of animal assisted therapies and interaction with companion animals. We have to work to lift each other up, to build a community and environment where everyone feels valued, welcomed, and free to show up as their authentic selves, regardless of race, color, gender, 
ethnic background, or even their financial situation. And so together, we need to focus on the purpose that drives all of us, creating a better world for pets and people alike. I wanna take this opportunity to thank Purdue University and the College of Veterinary Medicine for asking me and inviting me to participate in this timely and important discussion. I wanna thank my colleagues at the Diversify Veterinary Medicine Coalition community for leading the transformational work that needs to happen to make room at the table for individuals of all backgrounds to thrive in this rewarding and noble profession. I wanna say thank you to heroes like Dr. Blackwell and the Access to Veterinary Care Coalition for your pioneering leadership in the field of veterinary social work and for being champions for the cause of pet equity. Thank you also to all my friends and colleagues at Veterinarian Star Borders for your tireless effort to provide sustainable support services to those who need them the most. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank all my colleagues at Antec, at Mars Veterinary Health and Mars Pet Care for sharing the vision of making the world we want tomorrow, one that is more diverse, equitable and inclusive. And most importantly, Thank you all for joining today. And for more information, please visit our website, diversifyvetmed.org.